Hello, welcome to new tutorial. In this video, we are going to be working on Fabric Pool. Okay, the name of this laboratory is Cloud Sharing with Fabric Pool for Cost Efficient Storage. And I am going to bring here the lab guide for a second. Okay, so in this figure from NetApp, uh, this is an overall explanation of what a fabric pool is. Here we have our own tab devices. And, and you know, well, whenever a user is working on their files, um, they have it in the share drive or whatever, and they got it started there. So as traditional um, NetApp appliance used to keep the data on the storage array itself. And now with fabric pool with Fabric Pool technology, we are going to be able to create um, a configuration that for the data that is not actively accessed, uh, it's going to be sent to an S3 bucket or an Azure Blob storage uh, bucket. And this is for uh, optimization of the storage array itself and for uh, having better performance of the local tier uh, for the active users using their current systems, their current file system, uh, and the, the, non, the data non-accessed is going to be kept securely in another location, not keeping um, the storage of the of the storage array itself. Okay. Uh, it's very important to mention that uh, this is not a data protection solution, as the uh, own tab keeps the the waffle of the objects, the write anywhere file layer. So in case uh, something is gone uh, in the production system, we we cannot discard the on time system uh, thinking that the data lives in the cloud. It lives there, but we need the uh, the waffle uh, the waffle configuration from the on tap itself. Okay. First exercise: fabric pool setup for storage grid. So let's open a Mozilla Firefox. And we are going to log into cluster one. This is cluster two. I'm clicking cluster one. We are going to uh, log in here with admin credentials. Okay. Let's go to storage, then volumes. As an example, we are going to choose uh, volume data tree and here we can see inactive data store locally so this uh, this is a volume of 3 gigabyte and 1.72 gigabyte are is the usage uh, however uh, from this 1.72 there are 1.17 gigabytes inactive okay so let's go to tiers here we have a box for SSD aggregates. Let's click on aggregate one cluster two. And here we can see the same perspective, but now from aggregates side. This is inactive data from this particular aggregate. 2.03 of 3 of 3.25 gigabytes used in that particular aggregate. Okay, let's go back to all tiers. And here we can see that there is no cloud tiers configured. So the first step is to create an intercluster that will support a fabric pool. So let's go to the left panel and click on network. Network, then overview. Here we can see our lips for management and data. Let's click on create a new one. The name of this lib is going to be inner cluster, uh, sorry, uh, interface role inner cluster. And the name of the lib is going to be the same inner cluster one. Home node, uh, we can keep uh, the, uh, the only node that is there. IP address is going to be 192.168.0.154. Subnet mask is 24. It's an auto field there. 
update and save. Here we can see our, our new inner cluster leaf. And here under type, here we can see uh, the types of our uh, leaves logical interface for data inner cluster and cluster node management. Okay, now we have to create a bucket for our fabric pool. Now let's click on status script. I am going to open a new tab. And now we have to go to tenant login. Uh, we are going to log in uh, with root. Let up one. And let's go to buckets. Here we can see this is an S3. And currently there is one uh, one bucket for cluster one. We are going to create a new bucket, but, but now for cluster two. Okay, let's click on create bucket. Fabric, fabric pool dash cluster two. We can keep the same region, US is one. And here we can see our new bucket. Now we have to add um, a storage grid object store for fabric pool in our own tab. So let's go back to our cluster two. We are already logging in here. Let's go to dashboard. And now we have to go to storage, then tiers. Okay, this is this is a previous screen. Let's click on Add Cloud Tier. We are going to create uh, this cloud tier from Storage Grid from for the bucket that we just create. We are not going to own tap strip volume. This this is not covered in this volume. In this video, we are going to be working directly with Storage Grid. Click on Storage Grid. The name of the cloud tier is going to be as default, as it has been profiled automatically here. Now for URL style, it's going to be path style URL. And the server name is going to be um, uh, the URL of the storage grid. It's DS, uh, ds one admin onedemonetapcom We can validate that clicking on storage grid tab. Here you can see the same information. Okay, I'm closing this. It was just for reference. For object storage certificate, uh, we have to uncheck this. We have to keep SSL. And for port, we are going to put here uh, 10,443. Um, 10,443. Okay, access key. I'm taking the access key from the lab guide. And the same for the secret key. And now we have to click, uh, we have to put here uh, the container. So as you saw, the name of our container, or new container is fabric pool dash cluster two. I'm going to copy directly from here. So. Now let's scroll to the bottom, click on save. Uh, we are going to um, configure in this cloud here with no aggregates. Uh, we are going to do this in the next step manually. Uh, we can discard this alert and uh, we can continue without an object store certificate. Okay, now we can see on the right side 
a, a box which is clouds or cloud tier and this is the, cl the cloud tier that we just configured. Now, next step, tiering policies and attaching a local tier. So for this exercise, we have to go back to tiers. Uh, here we are in tiers. And for our cloud tiers, we have to attach some local tiers. So from the three dot menu, click on attach local tiers. Okay, we are going to add as primary uh, the three aggregates. And let's click here, update volume cloud tier properties. So here we can see uh, the tiering policy for the volumes. Uh, for the moment, we can keep this as auto. Auto. Click and save. This is a warning that the stores cannot be detached after they are attached to local tiers. Are you sure you want to continue? Click on OK. Uh, by the way, it is possible to disconnect an object store after it has been attached to an aggregate, but doing so requires that you move all the volumes off the aggregate and that you then delete the aggregate. So it's kind of challenging. Um, scenario but it is, it is possible okay now here we can see in the cloud tier uh, or local tiers the aggregates that we just add there okay now let's click on aggregate one cluster two the very first one in here and here we can see a difference from uh, the previous perspective. As you remember, here we saw the inactive data, but now here we can see uh, the data that is going to be stored in the bucket, in the cloud bucket. As we just create this, uh, this sharing configuration, there is no data in there, but after uh, five days, that's the default policy for this laboratory, uh, for sure there will be some bytes in here. Okay. So, next exercise, tuning fabric pool. So, uh, the, this exercise that we are just done, this is for configuring it. That's the reason of cluster number two, but now we are going to work on cluster one. I am going to open a new tab. I'm going to put it, uh, drag it into the beginning. And from here we can see that this configuration is already in there. So let's go to storage, then tiers. And here we can see some valuable information that this configuration is in here. Look at this. This particular aggregate already has 1.76 gigabytes into the bucket. Okay, let's go to all tiers. And by the way, there is a two cloud tiers and uh, there is one for uh, on tap volumes on tap s3 volumes and we have another tier for uh, directly for a storage grid tier but as you can see here there is no local tiers in here now let's go to the aggregate tree cluster one as you can see here uh, aggregate one and aggregate two and cluster in cluster one uh, they have some data in the in that particular uh, cloud tier but this particular one uh, it is not configured yet let's click on it and here we can see that the inactive data is 1.18 gigabytes from 1.28 gigabytes okay let's go back to all tiers and let's go to aggregate one cluster one here we can see that uh, this is the amount of data that is being stored in the bucket. Okay, so now let's go to, uh, to the volumes, total volumes here. 
and click on project to volume. Here we can find information on this particular volume. Uh, the turning policy is auto. The cooling uh, period days is five days. Uh, this particular parameter I just mentioned in the previous exercise. And we have uh, here uh, the amount of data that is being turned into the cloud, 240 megabytes. Let's click on more. Then edit cloud tier settings. So we are going to change the tiering policy to a snapshot only. And the cooling period, we can change it to five days. Click on save. And now um, the tiering policy has changed. Now, OK. So now that we are done with this changing policy, we are going to promote data back from cloud tier into the local tier. So in order to do that, we have to go to uh, open SSH section to this cluster. Okay, we have cluster one, click on load, click on open, and log in as admin. Uh, uh, password is NetApp1 and we are going to go to advanced mode set set dash prep advance are you sure click on Y okay now this is the command volume show footprint dash volume and the name of the volume plus two a type point here okay here we can see uh, that this volume is currently using 370 uh, megabytes which you can validate it in the in the GUI and here we can see that there is 143 megabytes being tiering into the cloud tier. So, we have to submit this command for promoting uh, the cloud retrieval data. This is command volume modify and then, then, the, then the name of the volume cloud retrieval policy promote. Click on enter. Uh, click on just for that warning. Now let's run this command. Volume object store tearing show for project two. And now we can see it's ready. So let's go to uh, to comments back to the footprint and it's still in there. So we are going to perform a tiering scan to promote the data to uh, to be moved to the performance tier or local tier with next command uh, object store tearing trigger and the name of the volume also with the name of the SPM now let's see the footprint now and here we can see that um, uh, this is the this is the performance tier uh, this is um, the cloud tier and after we submit uh, that particular command now this has been reduced and everything is living now in the local tier. Okay. Okay, next exercise, fabric pool mirroring. So we are going to mirror a fabric pool now. And this is useful to maintain availability while performing a maintenance on your object store architecture. 
This is also uh, good for transitioning from one cloud tier to another for a given aggregate. So let's minimize the SSH. And now let's go to tier spec. Okay, here we are now in tiers. And let's click here on attach local tiers for the tier that is still empty. Okay. We are going to unselect the aggregate for primary. And here you can see uh, this is the option for adding a fabric pool mirror. Okay, we are uh, we are doing this for the two aggregates there. Click on save. And now let's scroll down a little bit. Yep, on the local tier or performance tier. Here you can see that uh, this logo is loading as the data is being migrated right now. Let's refresh this page. I'm going to stretch VMs. Let's go back to tiers. Oh, it's still loading. Uh, I am going to try a last attempt. I am going to uh, refresh the page directly from here. Um, let's see the results. Admin the lab one. Okay. Yep. Good results. Now here we can see that data has been mirrored successfully. Okay. So the lab guide, uh, uh, we are done with this, uh, with this fabric pool mirroring. And lab guide is mentioning a couple of tools uh, that will tune in and will be, will be better, good for the storage admin. Uh, these tools is use object tagging in a storage grid. The other one is object storage profiler. We are going to cover those in a different video. Thank you.